Two men, two microphones, one movie, a couple of beers, and some wildly outlandish critiques about the movies you may or may not love. The following review will have massive spoilers and possibly offensive commentary. This content may not be suitable for little bitches. Brought to you by Goat Straw Entertainment and some liquid courage. What's up, movie lovers? Welcome back to another episode of Not Your Everyday Critics. I'm your host, George Lugo. And I'm Manny Rivera. And then coming up on theater stage right... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, David? How you guys been? This is our buddy, Good. David Raby. David Raby. Uh, Long-time friend. Um, we've known this guy. Whoa. Stuff's still I'll dropping over there. But uh, he's a mixologist, and he's another movie lover that we have. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually appreciate his opinion more. Wow, than Manny's. That is some bullshit right well, there. You guys are drinking today is Manhattan's. Manhattan's. Enjoy. Sweet. Appreciate it. All right, All right, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do a quick little cheers, and then we'll jump right into our yeah. rest of our intro. There we go. Cheers. Oh, delicious. God damn it, David. Wow. You killed it with that this drink. fucking good. That is so good. I'm so Holy excited. Moly. I can't wait to do the fucking... I can't wait to do this now. Yeah, if I had right, the right. garnishes like the cherry and the orange peel, that would have been a lot better. But I'm sorry. It looks pretty good. Pretty good. Still Not pretty bad. good. Still pretty good. All right, so let's jump right into the intro. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what we do on this show is we uh, critique and review uh, films of every every genre, every generation. So everything from like I don't know Nosferatu to like the Shawshank Redemption, which is one of my favorite films. Yes. Um. Go ahead. And like always, we're just a couple of guys that you know have a passion for movies, and uh, these are our opinions, our views, you know, our critiques on these kind of things. Um. Well, what is it? <laughs> Sorry, uh, movies are subjective, and if you have a movie that it's not for you, then it doesn't mean it's not for somebody else. So keep an open mind. Hundred percent. Movies are subjective. Movies are for. There's a movie for everyone. There's a movie for movie for, movie for everyone. And since there's about 500,000 movies in all of existence, I think we have a lot of work to do. So what do you say we jump? Right into this bad boy. All right, down to the nitty-gritty. Down to the nitty-gritty. Today we are going to be reviewing one of my favorite comedies of all time. We are going to be reviewing Uncle Buck, starring John Candy, released in 1989, directed by John Hughes. Um, I'm super excited for this episode. You know, the... I hadn't seen this movie. It wasn't like until like last week that I saw this movie. And yeah, it surprised me a little bit. Cause I was like, <laughs> I'm like, you lived with me as you know, you were my roommate for a yeah. while. I'm like, how have you never seen I've, this I've movie? I've never seen Uncle Buck. I've and I'm sure I've watched this multiple times in a day. Uh, so I mean, I don't doubt it. Yeah, you know, I don't doubt it. But I've I've yeah. never seen Uncle Buck, and I yeah. gotta tell you. This, this movie's fucking funny. <laughs> it is pretty fucking. It funny. is a great movie. It's pretty fucking Definitely funny. Definitely a good family uh, comedy. Uh, I enjoyed it, and I'm I'm a fan of John Candy. You know yeah. what I mean, and and then I was actually surprised to see that Macaulay Culkin's in there too. There's a there's a couple actors you know, in there. There's, there's are, a few people. Yeah, that a couple I was just actors like, in wow. there. So like yeah, like we said, it's a, it's a comedy, and there's no other sub uh, sub genre. I feel like it should be comedy drama, but when I when I looked it up, it's just comedy. Yeah, it's just comedy. So let's uh, let's go over the outline really quick. So we're gonna go over the intro, the cast, the writing, direction. Soundtrack slash, slash score, the type of comedy. We'll explain that when we get to it. Uh, take another drink. Joke gag setup. We're gonna do low point. So when the main character gets the rock bottom, oh, that's good. Redemption. Basically, what what that word means when he can, when he <laughs> redeems himself. Yeah. Uh, framework, performance, budget, and the outro. So I'm sure you've noticed a lot of those are very consistent. We always go over a good majority, and there's some in there that are going to change based on genre to genre. Yeah. So what do you say we jump right into the synopsis of the movie? The synopsis of the movie. The synopsis of the movie? 
Uh, I found two, so give me one second. All right. No, 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 no. Synapses of the movie. It's because... Okay, ready? <laughs> I didn't read the synapses of the movie. This one's short. Okay. So. <clears throat> Bachelor and all-around slob, Buck babysits his brother's rebellious teenage daughter and her cute young brother and sister. It's the shortest what, one I could find. What a weird one to say, like, cute, like, throwing in the cute younger brother and sister. It's like, ugh. <laughs> yeah. They didn't have to throw cute in there, right? They did not. <laughs> <laughs> they could have been like, you know, his his two nieces and nephew. Yeah. <laughs> his family members. His but family you members. Put cute in there. Oh. But they're like, he's cute. They're cute. They're like, I want the guys, daughters. The guy the who wrote boy. the guy who wrote cute. Check that guy's background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something needs to be who done. Hired that guy. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna jump into our first category, Zacchaeist. So. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's That's our intro. second card. I'm so excited. Uh, we're <laughs> going to do intro. the intro. Start us off with the intro. We're going to do the intro. I absolutely love this intro because it starts off, you get all the uh, the production companies, and yeah. then, like, a piano is playing. It's all... Dun, 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 Man, he looks like he's really playing it, huh? It's so good. Good stuff. And then it goes to a black screen, and then it has Uncle Buck in, like, pink, and then, like, a blue background, like, right, a blue highlight around the pink. And then it it fades into, it fades in the scene, and then it shows his niece, Tia, walking down the street, and the piano's still going. The, the piano is, like, what makes this scene very wholesome, and, like, you start to, like, you start to feel happy that you're watching these characters because the the music is actually the score. I mean, is very uplifting. The piano play. Um, so Tio walks down the street up to the house. They show a pan shot of the front house, and then she walks up to the house, and then uh, a school bus pulls up, and then Maisie steps off the school bus. You know, and then she starts doing that cute little kid thing where she's like. Jumping, uh, avoiding all the cracks. She's like, mm, 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 mm. yeah. See, that's cute. Like kids do. But he no, didn't have no. to write that in the yeah. in the summary. He's like a cute. Yeah. What was a cute a... boy doing? <laughs> he was running around the house, trying to make sure no one sees him. <laughs> so he's like riding, running around the house. I guess bullies are like chasing him or whatever. So yeah. he's like hiding behind the house. Um, we'll get to his thing a little bit later because there's some, there's actually some backstory for that. Okay. So. He uh, ends up going into the house, and the girls already got their bags down. And then he comes in, and then uh, Maisie and Tia are talking. And then uh, Maisie puts her bag on the table, and she's like, don't put your bag there. These people eat there. She's like, they eat on plates. He's all, it's the same shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. And they have, like, a little tiff there. She's like, oh, you said a bad ooh, you word. said a bad word. Yeah, so. Um, and then Macaulay Culkin comes in, so Miles comes in, and he slams the door all out, and then T gets upset. She's like, do you mind? He's like, I'm sorry. Like, He's like, basically explains these bullies were chasing him, and like one guy pelted him with a shoe. <laughs> and then she says, and Tia's, this is where we get a little bit of backstory on what they're doing in this neighborhood. Tia says that, oh, you can thank our parents for that. They're the geniuses that decided to move us here away from Indianapolis. So we yeah. already get... We get some backstory, like, right off the bat. So they used to live in Indianapolis, and now they're in um, Chicago? I believe they're I in Chicago. Know. I don't remember. Home of the Bears. Maybe. I don't know. I don't, I I don't remember, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't but know. They're, like, in the suburbs in a in a nice in a yeah, nice, in a nice state. neighborhood, yeah. nice area. Um, and then uh, Miles has confrontation with Tia, and she's, like, she's being really aggressive with him. Yeah. So we get to see a little bit of her personality, like right off the bat. Like she just she don't put up with no shit. She'll speak her mind, and she also will do something if you cross her, right? So like Miles says some shit, and then she goes and like grabs him by the arm. He's like, "You're ripping my arm off, god damn it!" And so like Miles is like, "Oh, you're supposed to just open the door for us, not supposed to kick us around." And then, uh, but, but Miles like a smart ass kid. He is a smart ass kid. 
like a thousand fucking questions and things to say. Well, he's a, he's a child. That, they do that comes to being annoying and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so he's a child. They do that stuff. Sometimes he deserves some yeah. shit that comes They do that him. shit. They do that shit. But yeah. Yeah. And so we have just a little bit more of the intro here. So that scene's going to fade out. Tia makes her stupid s- statement because Miles is being loud and obnoxious. And like, Maisie's like, oh, why do we need boys? They're so loud. And Miles is like, shut up. And then Tia's like, we need boys so they can grow up, become men, and turn into shadows. And then she steps off camera. And then it goes to Buck and Shanice. And they're eating at a restaurant. Yeah. Well, it's really a bar that serves food. Like yeah. if, you, if you look at it, it's really a bar that yeah, it's a bar that serves food. Not like the White House. So they're not like yeah, they're not some, like they're not some sitting. Local diner. They're not sitting down at a really nice restaurant. It's, no. it's a bar that serves food. Although they're dressed up like if they're you know they're, they're nice nicely place. dressed, I guess. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so they're all happy that they're out eating and they're talking. And I guess uh, we get a little bit of information about Buck here because like he's like, oh, I'm not really excited about going to work for my my girlfriend. So we find out that his girlfriend. His girlfriend, she sells tires for a living. She's, she's, the man, been, she's the manager. Yeah, she's the manager of that tire shop. Yeah. And she's been lo- at, bugging him to go work at the shop for a long time, and he's been putting it off, putting it off. She's just been wheeling and dealing, huh? Just wheeling and Jeez. dealing. And so um, she finally convinced him to go, and then she keeps bringing it up. She's like, I just, I got to know. You're going to be there. You're going to be there in the morning, In the right? morning, in the a.m., be there promise. in the morning. And she then, has that accent too, like almost like a. Uh, it's Midwest. Midwest. It's a Midwest yeah. accent. <laughs> it is yeah. Chicago too, by yeah. the way, George. I just looked it up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's Midwest. It's Midwest a, oh God! Accent. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> Chicago, the Bears. Chicago, the Bears. <laughs> the Bears. <laughs> and she's like, "You're gonna be there tomorrow in the AM. Promise." He's like, "Shanice, if there was an excuse that I possibly think you would buy, I'd use it." <laughs> <laughs> and then we're right about the 15 minute mark and this is where like now it shows um now it shows the other like bob's house you know with all the kids and you hear a heartbeat right and it shows everyone sleeping right like a top view of everyone sleeping dun, yeah. dun, 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 and you hear a flat line dee, and then you see tia wake up and then there's a phone call and then um Bob. And then Bob picks up the phone. He's like, hello. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh, no. And then Bob's wife gets up, and she's like, what is it? And she's like, oh, it's your it's your aunt. Your father had a heart attack. And then that's the uh, our intro. That is a fucking great intro. It's a pretty good it's intro. It's a really good intro. It's a pretty good intro. It pretty much uh, introduces everybody, and they're pretty much their given nature yeah. of how they are. And they give you a little bit of the background, the story, what's happening, where they're, yeah. where the location's at, you know, like where the, they moved from. Yeah. So there's a lot of depth there. Yeah, there is a lot of depth there. And it, I, I actually, I, the intro to me was, it was, it was pretty, pretty good. kick-ass. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoy. Pretty kick-ass. I love the intro. Especially the piano at the very, very beginning. Every time I hear it, it makes me so happy. <laughs> All right, so that was our intro. Yeah. So let's now go on to we're our gonna next jump onto the cast, which is the cast. So we have uh, John Candy. Yep. Obviously. Buck Russell. Uh, Jean Louisa Kelly is Tia Russell. She. Oh my God, that's very wonderful. She. So hot. She is. <laughs> she's cute. She's hot. <laughs> she's. <laughs> uh. Tell you. Let's see. Gabby Hoffman okay, uh, Gabby didn't is really Maisie Russell. Really aged him well. uh, Macaulay Culkin, Miles. Uh, Amy Madigan is Shanice Kobolowski. Elaine Bromka. That's an interesting name. Bromka. Russian. Cindy Russell. Uh, Garrett M. Brown is Bob Russell. Oh, he looks almost the same. Just gray hair. That's interesting. Uh, Lori Metcalf plays Marcy Don't you Dahlgren. Mean Rachel Frost. From Roseanne? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jay Underwood plays Bug. Bug. Yeah. Let me see. We got a few more here. Brian Tarantina. He hmm. plays uh, E. Roger Coswell. It's Buck's buddy. Mike's. Bugs Bunny? It's Buck's <laughs> buddy. I heard you. Keep going. 
Fucking heard you. Let's go. <laughs> Mike Starr is Puta the Clown. Puta there. Ah. Boop, 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 boop. He can do that, but I can't see a fucking Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Suzanne Bitch. Shepherd is uh, Miss Hogarth. Uh, William Wyndham. Oh, he does the voice of Mr. Hatfield across the street. Yeah. Uh, Dennis Cockrum is Pal. And then the rest are very, they're all like sub characters. So yeah. we're going to give our toast to everyone that was involved with the movie. Everybody. Everybody. Cheers. Cheers, David. Ooh, David, David. Oh, so goddamn good. It's fucking delicious. So goddamn <laughs> so good. Fucking thank good. You, thank you. So for the cast. God damn. I'm so I'm so like close and like 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 this I'm so involved with this movie that I think that I wouldn't change anything, to be honest. I wouldn't. And as I was reading more about um who they wanted for Uncle Buck, I was like, Jesus Christ, G- uh, John Candy wasn't even first. No, I build I don't think he was first. No, John Candy wasn't even the first. Yeah. Thought process. There were so many other ones before John Candy, but due to scheduling conflicts. There's always scheduling conflicts. Yeah. Due to scheduling conflicts, John Candy was able to do Uncle Buck. But now the that I've seen Uncle Buck, I can't think of anybody else doing Uncle well, give Buck. Well, uh, give Candy. us the names of the other people, shithead. So some of the other names for Uncle Buck was, one of them was Michael Keaton. Oh, that's a horrible one. Yeah. Another one, I another like one Keaton, was Dan Aykroyd. But- that, that one might have been that one wouldn't have been another bad. Another one would have been Dan Aykroyd. Another one was uh, Robin Williams. Oh, of course. Um, Bill you, Murray. I was just about to say Bill Murray. Bill, Bill, Bill Murray, Murray was, was another so one. big in the eighties. That would be a good one too. Robin Williams kind of throws me off though, because like he was a little famous, but he wasn't like as famous as he was like in the nineties. You know? No, but this is actually uh, John Candy's first uh, like lead film. He was a lead in this film. He was in other movies with other people, but he wasn't the lead. He was joined with them. This was he was like a supporting lead. character. I don't, I don't know if uh, is that true. Yeah, this is true. That's exactly what I read. Oh. That's what I read on. Uh, when did when did, uh, did when did Harry Crumb come out? Oh, I have I have no idea what even what that even is. He plays a detective. His name's Harry oh, Crumb. Oh no shit! Yeah. Oh yeah, I have no idea. I'll look uh, it up right now. I have no idea. Yeah. But there was like a few. If, this, if you're saying this is his first lead, he didn't get a lead film till '89. Yeah. It's so hard to believe so with John he, Candy. He uh let he was a lead with other people in the film. He's supporting he, he's a supporting supporting lead actor. Supporting but he didn't character. get his own lead till Uncle Buck. That's he didn't it. become the lead character. It, yeah. It does say nineteen eighty nine for who's Harry Crumb as well. Oh, uh, they probably released okay, so Uncle Buck probably released first and then Harry Crumb probably yeah. released later in the year then. Yeah. So okay. this was his first lead in his film for Uncle Buck. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah, and that's what. And there was a couple of more names. Um, oh goddamn, what's his name? Roseanne's Roseanne's husband, Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold was one of them. That'd be a good one, actually. And uh, he's such a fuck up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was like watching him because it's like his life in shambles. You know, there was a couple. Of to other be honest, ones that was in there. Bill Murray should have been picked number one because he because of the success know. of Caddyshack. I don't know who I feel was like that would have been one. Chevy Chase was one of them. Chevy Chase was also another uh so like Chevy Chase probably would have been all really of these good 80s too. Yeah. Heavy Chevy hitters. Chase was also yeah. another one that was also like, another from Caddyshack. He also was in Vacation. Yeah. National Lampoon's Vacation. Yeah, they had so. him also before even John Candy. But with all these other names, I think John Candy did Uncle Buck justice. <sighs> like I can't see anybody else portraying Uncle Buck the way he did, and he did it so well. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I, I I can't see anybody else. Uh, Tia, Jean Luisa, <laughs> I, I liked her as Tia. She had this real snotty attitude of a girl. So, she did. Okay, so you were talking about Tia. Yeah, Tia. Um, you pervert. <laughs> <laughs> Tia, um, playing that freaking teenager with the attitude. That's every teenager, yeah. 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 But she plays it so damn well. Like, she knows she, it all. Does she's everything. such a snarky character. Seriously. Yeah, I love it. Like, she has coffee in the morning, and, uh, yeah. and she's like, you drink coffee in the morning? Like, uh. I'm not doing takes it to drink. impress you. <laughs> As she takes a drink, she's like, oh. I love when he's like, 
and like literally before she does that, he's like making breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like all this crazy shit all over the place. It doesn't even make sense. And then Macaulay Culkin comes on, he's like, oh my God, he's cooking our garbage. It's <laughs> 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 so fucking funny. Uh, yeah. man, yeah, no, I, I didn't have a problem with any of these characters at all. They, no, they, they all it's great. Did, they all did well. Yeah, did it did well. So I'm, I'm glad, it, I'm glad it panned out the way it did because it might have been something else, and it might not have been nearly as good of a movie. Yeah, Macaulay so. Culkin was actually the first thought to play his character. No, oh, that's good then. Yeah, Macaulay Culkin. They wanted Macaulay Culkin to play. His that's character. surprising because he hadn't even done Home Alone yet. He did. No, didn't Home Alone uh, come out in ninety uh, one? I'm pretty sure Home Alone came out at that time. I'm gonna double check because he seemed rather yeah. young for. Yeah, Home Alone. I think. Yeah. I think. Check, I think. Because I, I think it came out in 91, 92. So first he Home made Alone. a movie 90. that okay. got him recognition to be in Uncle Buck. I, I don't know if it was a movie. Was. Maybe. Maybe commercial. Uh, maybe no. short. I don't know because he has some serious lines in this one. Yeah, because he's the the nephew. Yeah, he's one of the main characters of the of the movie. Well, he only did he only has f- four other credits before Uncle Buck. Yeah, starting from 1985, The Midnight Hour, and then I guess this was That's a, a TV, TV show, right? Midnight Hour, I believe so. Okay, no, it's actually a movie. It's a movie. Yeah, one hour and thirty four minutes. It says okay. The TV show he did was uh, one episode of The Equalizer, that ran from eighty five to eighty nine. Denzel in that too. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Rocket um, Gibal- Gibalter Gibraltar Gibraltar Yeah 1988 oh. Okay Also a movie Then See You in the Morning 1989 Also a movie And then Uncle Buck So Okay Doesn't say Yeah dude, the, uh, Home Alone came out after Yeah So mm-hmm. he did have a few films Before that Which I didn't even know He had those films Under his belt Yeah Yeah But that's what got him the recognition yeah. to do this movie because I think the girl who played Maisie, I believe this was her first feature. Um, I'm almost positive. I think so. But I think she, she did. Up, I think, but I think she did commercials. And she shows up stuff. later in another movie. I read. I she's remember. in a few movies. Uh, the other movie I remember her from the most is uh, Now and Then. Oh, okay. It's a very. Gay movie isn't like a teen sort of. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. It's like I've a, never seen. It's it. kind of like it's kind of like a rom com type movie. Is you it Christina know? Ricci in that movie? Yes, the always incredibly hot Christina Ricci. Ah, uh, you know what? That's Christina Ricci one. in that movie grows up to be Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> so how do you get Christina Ricci into Rosie O'Donnell? I never knew that. that I don't know. Like, so um, but back to Tia really quick because yeah. I forgot to mention this. Was the character that they wa- the person that they wanted to play Tia first was Winona Ryder. Ooh, oh, that would I can see one. that. Yeah, yeah, they wanted Win- Winona Ryder first, but she turned down the film because she was, was she shooting doing? Heather's or Heather's. Oh, or Heather's. Like Heather's. Yeah, Heather's. At the same time. Yeah, because this was just after Beetlejuice. Yeah, and uh, so she wasn't able to do that and everything. Yeah, Beetlejuice was what eighty seven, something like that. Probably I think Beetlejuice is eighty seven. You know, and Christina Ricci wasn't even a thought process to be in this movie. Eighty eight, Beetlejuice, which oh, was okay. a kind of a bummer because I think she would have done. Okay. I think I think we're good there. I think yeah. we're good with the cast. So, what do you say we move on to our next category, the writing? So, this movie was written by John Hughes. So, John Hughes. John Hughes. Uh, for people who don't know, he wrote tons, wrote and directed tons of of our favorite movies growing up, like Breakfast Club, uh, Sixteen Candles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, what was that? The one he did the someone, uh, some kind of some kind of love. Fuck, can't he's got a that. lot of classic. movies. He has a that lot of classic with. movies that we John literally Hughes go. Up. Actually, is a great and also director. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. He did that previous with. Uh, John Candy and uh, Steve, Steve Martin. Martin. Oh. So I mean, yeah. he all, he all already he had already worked with John Candy, you know. So I mean, that's that's already something there. You know? Yeah, good connection there. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I like his writing too. He writes some real fucking characters, and he's like very <laughs> witty with the way he writes these characters, and he doesn't stray from their personality. So that's that's a plus because you know, like when. 
sometimes they'll write a character and you'll get a, a little sense of what their character or their personality is like at the beginning of the movie because they're trying to establish boundaries. Yeah. Um, but then sometimes they'll stray from that and they'll do something that's way out of character. Like he, what he does, always in character, always from start character. to from start to finish. At least from what I remember from all the movies I've watched of his, yeah. start to finish, they stay in character. Sometimes they'll change and they'll progress and become better people. Yeah. As the movie goes on, but there's not like they don't do something that's wildly out of character. That's cool. So that's good. Yeah. Um, I don't really have too much to say. I mean, this movie was actually really good. And I don't expect anything yeah. less from John Hughes. He's given us a bunch of freaking classic movies yeah. that we grew up with. Yeah. So. so I think we're good. I think we're good with the writing. It's right? set right there. Yeah. Dialogue's great. Dialogue's awesome. Story's great. Punchlines yeah. were fucking great. I like that it was also like a movie we could all kind of relate to because it was like a a family tragedy you know, and a relative had to like step in and like help out. Yeah. So it's very relatable. Yeah. You know, that's like some real world shit. You know? it's, it's really good. Yeah. I mean, I probably would never do that, but uh, yeah, it's fucking good shit. Solus. Uh, so let's move on to our yeah. next category. Direction. So, I mean, this is also was directed by, John Hughes, which yes, we <laughs> kind of just went over a bunch of the shit that he had done previous. Um, but I mean, if you have to go with uh, the overall look of the movie, the way it was captured, and well, everything. no, because that's well, that's a whole different category. We have a whole separate I mean, category for that. Well, I, well, I guess that's framework. I guess it's framework. We're we're gonna get to that eventually. So we'll just skip the direction because hey, it was great. So let's go to soundtrack and score then. Soundtrack and score. So, I mean, there's not a lot of actual soundtrack. There's a lot of original score in this movie. Yes. And, um, and it really, it sounds like toony, you know, because oh, it was. Well, he does a good job of creating uh, music that fits the the sequence and makes the sequence come alive. Like, I was listening to an interview with him. And he, like, he originally wanted to be a musician. I feel like a lot of directors kind of go that route. They oh, want to be kidding. He wanted to be a musician, so he was, like, really, really into music. And so, like, sometimes he would base entire scenes or sequences off of music first. Like, he would have music first. Yeah. And then build a whole scene behind it, which is an interesting way to build a whole scene. There's some directors that do that. I know for uh, instance, Robert Rodriguez does that. He films certain scenes with a certain song already in mind. That's great. And I think... Because I was, I've sometimes I'm not a director, but like, I think of like scenes. I'm like, this would be good if you played this, and then did this. You know, like it yeah. makes sense. Because like you kind of have a theme or like a theme, like thought on how you want it to pan out from start to finish. And I think it's a good thing to have yeah. because it helps you develop a sort of pace for the framework. Yeah. Like if the camera is moving, if there's things going by, it can be in tone with the music, kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. This guy. This guy. <laughs> Knows movies. Fucking crazy. He's going to be replacing this Old guy soon. Process. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, thin ice, man. <laughs> Seriously. What the fuck? God damn it. I can't mix drinks. Uh, <laughs> you can't do anything on the show, can you? <laughs> uh, overall, the score of this movie, um, I thought it was fun. I love it. It wasn't like uh, super I love it. serious or he, anything, but at the moment, when it need, when it, the time of the I wouldn't say that at all. I think I think the the score is incredibly serious and it's very on point. There's a lot of um, he makes you feel very specific. So like when you like when you start the movie, right? It's kind of like, uh, and when it starts, he's, the piano is playing, so it's kind of like heartwarming. But it's also a little mysterious because it's like they're, he's introducing you to all these characters, but he's doing it with such a light tone yeah. and is also very, it's warm. <laughs> it's easy to jump right yeah. into. And then there's. Um, so, one there's the, so one of the little things that I wanted to mention before okay. uh, was when John Candy was actually walking through the party. Right. Oh, OK. And in the background was actually uh, the, the music to run DMC. Yeah. So. And he goes, who's that? Is that Bobby in the Roots or anything like that? 
Funny shit is John Candy was actually really good friends with Run DMC, <laughs> so he knows who the he's music just, he's is. He's just fucking around, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but he's like, it's hey, funny. Uh, this and that, and he's putting up his fingers like this. So it was so funny that really quick while we're talking about that scene, when he's walking through, he walks in, he's smoking a cigar, right? Oh yeah, and like he's smoking a cigar. <laughs> And like it cuts away and it shows all the kids and the next scene he's holding a beer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like a, a glass beer, he's holding a Dixie cup. Yeah, so you have yeah. to like he had to stop and like fucking go to a keg and pump it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's so funny. That's so crazy. good. It's so good. But um yeah, overall score. Yeah, Beautiful. I feel I feel I feel like John Hughes he does a really good job about making you feel exactly what he wants you to feel. During those scenes. Yeah. So John Candy ba- being yeah. able to fucking sell it was fucking great. Yeah. Yeah, um, for sure. Uh, let's move on to our next category, type of comedy. So this is what they, there's so many different types of comedy. I'm not sure if you know this. Like I, I had to look it up because I was like, I'm like, well, what would we classify this? So I looked up all the different types of comedy in like uh, film and there, okay. there's like almost 30. Oh shit! There's a lot. Okay, I knew there was a few. I didn't There's know there was lot. thirty. There's a lot, like different subtypes and everything. And this one is what they considered straight comedy, which I thought was odd because like this, there's also drama in this movie. There is, yeah, so, of course. So I thought it was weird. This movie also didn't get a subtype of of drama. Well, I mean, there wasn't as much drama as there was comical. I don't know. It's pretty. I, I it's pretty well balanced. If it. you if you think, if you think about how often Buck makes a, a joke or 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 is like insulting another person, and then how he uh, reacts to people when they're insulting his kids, like the principal, and or, or when he's talking hilarious, though. or when he's talking, or when he's talking to Tia. But yeah. there is there's drama there. There may be drama, but there's drama it's there. also comical. There's it's funny at at certain points. It's I guess funny. I guess if you would have to chop it down, it's definitely more comedy than it is drama. But yeah. there's enough drama in here that hits real points where you're like, that's kind of fucking crazy. <laughs> like uh Because that like you mentioned before when he was talking to the teacher for Maisie. Because yeah. Maisie has a uh, an elaborate imagination or whatever. And yeah. yeah. And I don't know how you can be a principal and fucking talk down on a student because of having an elaborate imagination. And he fucking bug does it so damn well. Kicking her down off her fucking high horse because if they're going to talk shit about his niece for having a good imagination, if she makes yeah. something of herself. No, I get it. it. Another, I get it, yeah. And then he He's goes, like, your, your and if you want to do dreamer. yourself a favor, you yeah. go to fucking wherever, get that fucking uh, horse cat off your face, <laughs> I like how he took an incredible sequence and completely botched it. Thank what you. did he say? So, okay, so it starts off with the principal, and she's like, your niece is a silly heart and a dreamer. And then he goes, she's only, she's like, I don't think she takes her professional life, her school uh, professional life seriously. And then Buck goes, She's only six, and the the lady's like, that is that is not a valid excuse. I hear it every day, and I dismiss it. So the principal knows that's a valid reason, right, because every parent says that. They're only this age. Why would they take their school life yeah. career, their school career, serious Fucking when they're in years the, old, man. when they're in the first grade? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And so he's like, personally, I don't want to know a six-year-old that is a – that's not a silly heart or a dreamer. I s- definitely don't want to know one that takes their school life person or professionally like seriously. He's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, I don't even. He's like, I don't have a college degree. I don't even have a job. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And then he tells her, "Is like, if I ever hear about you insulting a kid again." Right, I'm gonna come down here. <laughs> he, he fucking threatens, <laughs> he threatens the fucking he principal. Threatens the principal. He's like, I'm gonna come down here, and he's like, "Here's a quarter. Why don't you take that and go downtown and have a rat gnaw that thing off your face?" Oh, that's <laughs> what he says. <laughs> it's super. Dude, good. you watched this so much. You said it to the T. Well, of course. I did. I actually, I, I skipped it a little bit because this Manhattan's killing me a little. <laughs> I love it. It's only one. I want another one. 
It's so good. It's um, fucking tasty. But yeah, there's a lot of moments like that. So yeah, he insulted yeah. her, but I mean that was like a real thing. It was a real thing. It's a but real it was, thing. It was like because exactly what would you say to a teacher that says that about your child? I mean, when you you're know? that like, type of uncle, and I'm pretty sure we can all agree here, we would say the exact same shit because you're not going to talk about my fucking niece or nephew like that. I was telling my niece the other week about she has a bully at school. Yeah. Oh shit. And everyone was telling her, like, I'm like, okay, yeah, tell the teachers, tell the principal, if the school does nothing, punch that bitch in the throat. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> or let that student know, my uncle stabbed somebody before. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck all these kids? Hell no. <laughs> Down. <laughs> On sight. <laughs> stab, stab, stab. Yeah. <laughs> Not for sure. Tell the principal if they don't do anything. Oh, take, don't ma- take matters in your own hands. Yeah. There's only so much you can take, man. There really is. There really is. Oh, man, that's fucking good. All right, so let's talk about, let's move on to a. Uh, I'll wait for George to get his right. done and then I'll get, get it started. Um, yes. Uh, jokes and gag setup. Yeah, joke and gag setup. Joke and gag setup. Um, I don't know. I was All trying. Right, so I will mention one of them. Okay. Okay. So one of the setups was, oh, David, thank, thank you. you, buddy. Thank you. Um, one of the, the joke setups is with Macaulay Culkin and John Candy is when he starts to grill him like freaking when he's asking like, him the questions, when right? He's asking him the questions, the interrogation or whatever. Yeah. In the beginning of the movie. And when Macaulay yeah. Culkin is just sits down and is just interrogating, uh, John Candy, they're with doing a bunch of fucking, yeah. Like Macaulay Culkin is just firing questions yes. at him and then Buck is answering and they're all they're both straight faced. And like. they're yeah, they're both dead on. <laughs> and then uh Buck goes, So how many questions do you normally ask to get the uh get to know somebody? He said what's there? your he's like, what's your record of consecutive questions? Oh, what's your record for consecutive questions? He goes, yeah. thirty eight. Carry on. No, he's <laughs> he's like, You're my brother you're my son's brother, all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you have says, a lot you have a lot more nose hairs. And he says thirty eight. I don't know if you know this or not. Yeah. Macaulay Culkin says thirty eight because at that time John Candy was thirty eight years old. Nice. So he said thirty eight. Nice. And uh so Macaulay Culkin um had a tro- had a hard time keeping up with the the funny aspect by speaking fast with John Candy. So what John Candy did was he uh, had a piece of paper or whatever next to him, big enough for Macaulay Culkin to read. And when it panned off to his picture, John Candy would hold it up really quick so Macaulay Culkin can read and then put it back down as the camera would put put on to John Candy nice. to go back and forth with them. That way they would have the comedy aspect of it all. I thought nice. that was pretty cool of him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, at that point, I mean, John Candy's a, a much more experienced actor. You know, Macaulay Culkin's a child. He's just, just starting his acting career. Yeah. So he, he's going to do whatever he can to help him. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. That was a sense. fun one. I liked that one a lot. Makes it sense. Good, it was a good, it was a good little, like, gag reel kind of joke thing going on with them, too. Yeah. Another sure. one that I liked, too, was. When he was insulting the uh, the principal, which you yeah, just mentioned. Yeah, which we just day. mentioned the principal, yeah. That one was a good one. That was a really good one. You know what? When it comes to Uncle Buck, he does some shit like you don't normally see. Like a like when he breaks that china plate that's expensive. <laughs> hey, where can I get that? Down like at the hardware He's store? He's like, can I get or? that? Like, you know, then can I get that like at an <laughs> antique shop downtown maybe? She's like. And he's like, in England. England. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Okay. It was just little things like that every it's now so and funny. again. Was It was just super funny. Yeah, it's super funny. You know what I mean? So it was fucking great. I think one of my favorites is like in the beginning. It's when he's talking to Shanice. And like after he finds out that, you know, Bob needs him to go watch the kids because, uh, you know. His, uh, his Cindy's wife had a, uh, Cindy's dad had a, had a heart attack. Yeah. So he calls Shanice. She's like, honey, honey, I've got some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, let me guess. You're not coming to work in the morning. And he's like, <sighs> and then he's like, what just, what just, what just, just let me, what you, give me, what you, what you, get it, give me, 
Oh, shit, goodbye. <laughs> Hangs up the phone. <laughs> that's like an accurate representation oh, of that's a man so talking to an angry woman great. on the phone. <laughs> I fucking love it. Oh, uh, that was so yeah, fucking and funny. I, like the, I love that. The, that they play his theme music next. The He's driving down the highway and shit. Yeah. It's so good. Hey, Ooh, David. Thank you, David. Oh. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much, brother, man. We love it. You got your drink ready? Do a little a salute. A salute. To the bartender. To hey. the bartender. Well, thank you thank guys you, for having me. Love you, David. So good. It really is. So it really good. Is. When it hits the lips. It really is. <laughs> so good. Because <laughs> it comes in really smooth, and then you have like a little tiny bite after. Barely. It's barely a bite. It's so, so fucking good. good. So good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's there's tons of there's tons of jokes and tons of gag setups in this whole movie. Like, yeah. there's another one with the uh, with Puto the clown. Like. Oh yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot about that scene. So I like oh, how he shows shit. up and he's completely <laughs> shit faced. He drives up in a Volkswagen mouse. <laughs> <laughs> so like he pulls in the driveway. He gets out of the car. He's completely shit faced. You can tell he's like falling all over the place and he stops and he burps and he goes to like he goes to push the, the doorbell and it's just it shows the doorbell and his hands like all shaky, like and he misses the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that scene is it so, so funny, fucking dude. funny. So I'll funny. I'll put her the clown. Put her there. Huh. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. And he goes, save it for the kids, pal. He's like, like oh, okay. He's like, oh, I'm sorry I was late. I was up uh, I was up uh, all night at, party. at a bachelorette party. Oh, a bachelorette party. You know, you need any dildo jokes? I'm the guy. Like I was like, away. he's like, hey, you've been drinking this morning? You have a couple drinks? And he's like, what are you, Mother Cabrini? Never touch of stuff? <laughs> and he's like, no, I just don't think I'd be drinking if I was to entertain a couple of kids. He's like, I'm gonna take the shit from you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's like, I'm the lo- I'm the live level of like local live entertainment. He's like, oh my <laughs> god, you get your mouse, <laughs> you get out of here. <laughs> Overall, tons of jokes, tons of gags. I mean, it's freaking. It's good. Did yeah. you know that joke was actually supposed to be longer? Oh, really? That joke was actually supposed to be longer. Oh, so shit. he was supposed to get into a full on like fight, like fan, like family guy style chicken fight on the lawn with the fucking clown. Oh, that would have been yeah. so fucking good. So there's actually a lot. I guess John Hughes does this a lot with his movies where he just like, I guess like Anchorman where they have like all this extra footage and then he cuts and keeps what he likes, I guess. Oh, man. So that, that, that was, would have been fucking great. Yeah. So that was a thing. Um, where he fucking fought the, where he fought the clown, kicked the shit out of him, and all the kids are watching from the window. Yeah, Miles and his friends. So yeah. I guess we went, we went over it briefly with Miles that his story is a little bit more involved because he gets bullied at school. Yeah, and so he talks to Uncle Buck about that, and Uncle Buck like helps him with it, but at the same time, Uncle Buck's making him his lunch right, and every day his lunch is like. His, something crazy. It gets something. it's a bit. It gets. Hey, more. you guys want to trade? <laughs> yeah. So they only show you that once, though. Yeah. That was supposed to be a thing throughout the movie. Uh, so every day was supposed to be something different, and then by the time it gets towards the end, like he's like, "Let's see what my lunch is today," and the whole cafeteria is supposed to be like up in arms about it. Yeah. And then like he talks to Uncle Buck, like you know, you really helped me, kind of. Come out of my Dude, shell, Uncle Buck. He's so funny, but at yeah. the same time, he's that great uncle. Cause you know, you remember that scene where he's making the huge ass pancakes. Oh, dude! He's making the big ass pancakes for his nephew. I love that so much. I really want to try that one of these days. Down. I really do. I was watching. I was watching him do it, and I'm like, how? I was trying to figure out because he has a flat grill. I'm like, how did he light the things evenly enough to cook the pancake batter? Because I'm like, I wouldn't mind making a fucking four foot pancake. Well, he was on the stove and he no, no, turned- but he but he had a he had a it was different because like that was the island in the thing. Yeah, and then there was a it was a platform was raised, and I'm not sure what the heating source was for the for the yeah. uh, for the the flat plate. Because it was a di- it was a different heating element. Yeah. So I want to know what he used. That would have been great if they just they could have told us what it was. He's like, "Whoo, happy birthday!" But Woo-hoo! the end, but the ending results, the pancakes <laughs> that you saw at the end, 
Those were real pancakes. Yeah. They were Jeez. gigantic. They were real And the butter pancakes. was like the size of plates. <laughs> <laughs> gigantic. Those were real fucking pancakes they had on And then he had like the thing. full length bratwurst as the sausages. Oh, man. That fucking uncle, He's like, man. oh, you should see the toast. I couldn't even get it through the door. <laughs> <laughs> It's that's so fucking so cool. awesome. Um, that's that's like some cool shit for a little is. kid, you know? That's it's some like, cool shit for a little kid. If you think about it, I mean, come on. Wouldn't you go all out for your nephew, too? They put you in charge. There's nobody to fucking uh, to have his birthday with and anything like that. You would do something like that for especially you. Also, special especially also because you know? in the beginning of the movie, they find out, like, the parents are asking him about how hockey practice is going. Then he got kicked off the team. And then his dad's like, oh, so I guess you don't want a hockey stick for your birthday, huh? <laughs> it was a good thing I didn't invest in that shit. Holy shit. <laughs> didn't waste my money on you getting knocked off the team. Shit. But yeah, we would each be that type of uncle if we were in charge of our niece or nephew to try to give them the best day possible. I think I definitely am. I'm always drinking, smoking, swearing around them. Yeah, David's definitely that guy. Yeah. They know better not yeah. to. <laughs> they know better. <laughs> They're really smart kids, man. Um, yeah, but Plus, David cooks a lot, so. Yeah. Yeah, David cooks a lot. Yeah, or I'll buy them food. I'm like, okay, kids, what do you want to eat? You want that? All right, you got it. Yeah. So I fucking spoil them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you got to give them back, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, this uh, reminds me of a Jim Gaffigan skit where he's all like, when the kids are like, I want cake for breakfast. So you can't have cake for breakfast. You're going to have fried cake with syrup for breakfast. <laughs> 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 all, right, all right, so let's back move to on. It. Let's move tons on. Tons of jokes, tons yeah. of gags. Great. We're going to move on they to uh, going, yeah. uh, next category. Next yeah, category. Low point. Low, low point. point of the movie. So this is where the our protagonist hits their, Ooh. their lowest point Ooh. in the film. So I think when Uncle Buck hits his lowest point in the film is after he gets his tip from his buddy uh, and he, Tia misses out watching the kids with a dog race. And so he decides to take the, the kids to the dog race. He gets in the car. He almost gets. He almost. I was, I was thinking the exact same. He scene, almost does dude. it, dude. And like he's sitting the there, and then he thing. he looks into the rearview mirror and he sees them, and he's he like, "He sees hey. Maisie." And you could see him break down, like sees Miles. And this is like a real thing, I guess. Like when he was talking about it in his interviews, like he viewed it as like those were like because they're kids all also, but like as his own. So like it really hit him in a in a real spot. Yeah. Oh. It was it was a tough situation, and he didn't want to be that uncle. He didn't want to be that uncle. You it's know? a good thing so he did. He fucking yeah. had a, I don't know, uh, a change of heart, I guess, or just a, well, just because like that was a big that was a big money day for him. That would have paid. It, it would have. That would have paid for. Year. That would have paid for his whole year. Yeah. But the thing is, he just couldn't. He couldn't take the kids with him to go cheat on a no. fucking horse race. And he's missing his niece. So he did a responsible thing, you know. Took the kids back in the hill, uh, yeah. the house, and called Shanice. Mm -hmm. Shanice, I need your help. You know, yeah, this is serious. She's missing. Yeah, we haven't really gone over that because we don't really break the whole movie down. Yeah. So, at this point in time, uh, Tia had told uh, Shanice that Buck was out with Marcy from across Marcy. the street, and they stay out late. So she's lying to Shanice about their relationship. And so Shanice comes over the next day and Marcy comes over because she's a horn dog and Buck's not really interested, but she's like, Hey, <laughs> she's like, Hey, when, when you, you want to dance? He's like, if you dance, you're going to leave. And she's like, yeah, she'll leave. So he's like, all right. So he puts up with it. So he starts to dance with her. Right, and she starts doing all this crazy, like dirty dancing shit. What is she, with Marcy? Where she's, where she's like, slapping him in the knees. She's like so loud every time she speaks. Like she okay. announces she everything has, that she. She has doing. that. She just that weird, awkward. Yeah, you person. never come across women like that before. Not really. Yeah. No. Lucky you. You're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for this. Uh, all right, let's get back to the movie. I don't want to. Yeah, but anyways, so they're dancing, right? And. Marcy's being like very crazy with the dancing, doing dirty dancing, and being very like, um, was that uh, exotic adults? Yeah, yeah. Promiscu Either way, promiscuous. She's doing a mix it up promiscuous kind of is the word I'm looking for. Hey, Uncle shut Buck. the fuck up! I'm talking. You can't right? find words, man. Yeah, I just found it, and you interrupted no, me. No, he found it. 
I said promiscuous. You said promiscuous. And I then said he, he corrected me. He's like, yes, or confirmed. Um, and at this point, Shanice, Shanice drove up. She's in the parking lot. No one's answering the door. She notices the door is open. So she steps in. She's like, hello. She hears music playing, so she walks in. And then uh, she walks into the living room, and she sees Marcy and Buck dancing, right? And she's just standing there. And then so Marcy, Marcy <laughs> looks, and she's like, huh? And then Buck's like... He's like, and like the music started to slow down, and he's slowing down with the music. But he's still, <laughs> still kind of like dancing. He's still kind of dancing. It's so good, dude. He, he kept up the tempo and everything. So, so that's where we're at. Hey, there. Shanice. Um, so that's where we're, that part we we're covering with the uh, Shanice and, and Tia. So at that low point, he asks for Shanice to come help him find Tia because she ran away. Yeah. So let's go to our next category because that kind of those two kind of work together. Mm-hmm. Let's go to redemption. So this is where our protagonist kind of redeems himself. So he's in a bad place with Tia, and uh, he goes to the party looking for Tia, and this is where he ends up catching uh, Bug in bed with a different woman. It's not Tia. Nope. It's not. So he takes it upon himself to capture Bug. This whole scene in itself it's is good. fucking crazy, too. It's creepy. Because as he's going upstairs and he's knocking on the door, Bug is like, some occupied, you know, and they're still right, knocking on in the here. door. Yeah. Hey, somebody's in here. And somebody still comes down knocking on the door and tries to open the door. Bug goes, if you so much as try to open that door, then all of a sudden you hear a drill. And then you hear this drill fucking just drilling through the fucking uh, door handle. And then Bug is just having it's so this creepy face too. Because they him. have that like the like echoey. Like he's fucking not sure what is going on. Like he has this face like he's, wor- I don't know if he's worried or he's just like, what the fuck, you know? It's more what the fuck. And then all of a sudden he sees this drill go through the keyhole of the fucking door. And he's just fucking surprised. Oh, and then, then Bug kicks the door open and he's got the drill in his hand, and just zzz, zzz. and the the bit he has is like a foot and a half long. It's <laughs> fucking, it's good enough it's for a lobotomy. So long, like it was unnecessary, but it was fucking frightening. It was perfect. It was like great. Yeah. And then he walks through the door, and he goes like, "What the hell, man?" And then he finds out that that's not even Tia on the bed. You know, and is a younger, hotter girl. <laughs> it's somebody else, but she was definitely good looking for oh, sure. Oh, yes. Sure. <laughs> yes, she was. Um, yes, she was. The great part about that, though, is him kidnapping Buck. Yeah. So they don't really tell you that he does that. They just kind of hint at it. Yeah. Because he, like, he has a look of disgust on his face, and he looks at Bug, looks at her, and then he kind of gets puts a smile on his face, turns off the light, and then points the the drill, squeezes the trigger, and then walks towards him, and it fades out. Yeah. And then it shows Tia walking down the street. So, and as Tia leave wa- you in a little bit of mystery there. And but, as Tia's walking down yeah. the street, you see her doing that slow walk, like of misery, because she's upset of what had happened. And uh, you see Buck in his car, just cruising alongside her, not saying anything yet, um, but making sure that she's walking all right. Yeah, so this is his redemption part where he kind of, he kind of, he kind of uh, becomes the uncle that he needs to be with Tia. He consoles her, you know, yeah. in her hour of need. So, because as he stops, she goes, "You were right. Yeah, uh, you were right about everything. You know what he was trying to do. You were right." And he's just yeah, like, dude, he, he was trying to get his dick wet. What did you think, stupid? You yeah. know what, it's teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> Buck knew what's up because they're he hot said, as fuck. Like he said before, he was chasing the ladies too at that age. You exactly, know? dude. So I mean, that's that's what they do. He didn't. He said, "Come on, I'll give you a ride home." So she got in the car, and the I I like the fact that he didn't start a conversation once he got once she got in there. He just kept to himself because I'm pretty sure she didn't want to hear it. You know, he wasn't gonna try. Yeah, he wasn't gonna try and and scold her or anything because she had already been through enough. Yeah, you yeah know? exactly. And he was just going to let her, if she wanted to vent, she could vent. And she did. So that's a solid move. You know? Yeah. That's a solid it's, move. That's the best goes, thing you can do. Yeah. Because, solid move. You know, uh, 
you know, berating her for doing what she did, that's more of a parent's job. Yeah. If you're the uncle, the uncle. it's like, you know what? I don't have to say it, but I fucking told you so. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And she was like, are you going to tell my parents? And he's like, no. Nope. You know? And then uh, I guess she she hears something in the trunk, right? Or no, she asks, did you do something to bug? And then all of a sudden he, he just, just smiles. See Bug smile. And she's What'd like, you oh do? my God. Yeah. So he goes uh, to the back of his trunk, opens the trunk, and look, Bug is in there yelling like a motherfucker, like the little bitch that he is. Yeah, you know so I mean? Uncle Buck did his uh, his due justice. He <laughs> His uncleness. Yeah, he helped Tia <laughs> out, and he also kidnapped the boyfriend. <laughs> So I mean, that's we'll, crazy, dude. I mean, like, yeah, well, uh, we'll we're gonna skip past that because yeah. part of that goes into one of the other categories. But that's some that's fucking. That's some that's shit. some good shit. So I think I would he redeemed him. He, he redeemed himself with the, with his niece, and just his character overall. Yeah. So that's good. So let's so, jump into uh, our next category: framework. Framework. There's a lot of great fucking framework. There really in is. This movie. I gotta mention one though. I gotta mention one. Okay. I think it was fucking great mm-hmm. because. Um, it was actually a uh, buck um, swinging his golf club. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. That is a great That's a good fucking shot. scene. It's a good shot. Uh, because, um, for one, uh, he was actually using a right handed uh, wedge, but he's lefty. He's left handed. Yeah. He's lefty. So he used the right handed wedge on his left side. Um, and Probably he was actually, only, yeah. I, c- I couldn't really tell too much. And I didn't read about it, but I don't know if he was hitting towards the camera or away from the camera. Because if you take a look at that scene, it looks like it's away from the camera. But because due to how the the view looks. Does it just reverse it? It's not exactly reversed. It just plays tricks on you because of the shadow uh, and it's the like light, a, and because the light of, structure because of it. That shot is done really well because... The only thing in focus is Uncle Buck, and every, the, everything's black all around him, so he's kind of like a silhouette. Yeah. Right. So they do a really good shot with that. Yeah. So I, I can see how it's so like it might confuse you. Yeah. I don't think it would be. I'm pretty sure it would just be him swinging normally and not swinging like pushing it out. So I think he was it swinging out. at the camera. Right. Yeah. But it looks like he was swinging f- away from the camera and with the freaking uh, – a right-handed uh, club, even though he's left. He was still doing it the way he was. Well, would. you can still do the motion. Yeah, you can still do, the, still motion. do the motion. So That was actually a super cool scene for me because he ended up hitting Bug as he was running away. <laughs> yeah. And then he was talking even more shit, and then you just see him put out another ball. <laughs> yeah. That was actually yeah. really good fucking work. There's a lot me. of good framework in this movie. Um, really John work. Hughes is really good with uh, with setting up shots. Yeah. So, um, let me see. Another one that I really, really enjoy in this movie would probably have to be. Actually, I think it's going to be in the very beginning. It's going to be with Miles. So, when Miles is hiding behind the tree. Yeah. And they do a, like a, a pan shot of the whole house because he's scaling the whole thing. Yeah. So it gives you a little bit of perspective, like Miles' perspective, like what he's seeing. You know, I really like, I really like that. And then, and there's, there's tons. It's not, not just that. That's just one of my favorites. You remember the scene where they did uh, Uncle Buck's, uh, Uncle Buck Buck's apartment? Yeah, the two story apartment. The yeah. he does the clap. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that was done in a gym, a school gym? What do you mean? In the apartment was. The apartment was actually a set that they built inside of a school gym. Oh, okay. So yeah. I can believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was. Rent out the space. It's pretty it yeah. looked, it looked the space. lifelike. It looked huge, you know, like an actual fucking apartment. Right. It really wasn't that big. It was actually built to make it look like it was fucking huge. His but apartment it, didn't it look big. It was actually, uh, most of it, actually, a lot of the scenes. Uh, were shot inside of a fucking. It was probably uh, cheaper. Gym. Yeah, in St. Louis. It's cheaper. It was, yeah, because they didn't have a huge budget or anything. Yeah. But it was shot inside of a fucking school gym. And I thought, oh my God. 
a lot of what they did was fucking inside of a fucking gym. You know, it was fucking great. Yeah, it's they can, like uh, yeah. Reservoir Dogs. A lot of that was only inside the former funeral home that they rented out. Yeah. The upstairs part was supposed to be Mr. Orange's apartment. That's the same location where they it's were It's the filming. same location. <laughs> oh, no yeah. shit, yeah. really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't know that at all. That was, I mean, that was the, he sold the, he sold the, what was it, Natural Born Killers. Natural Born and, Killers and, and True uh, Romance. Yeah, Strips. True Romance, to, just to, so he can get money to make that film. But he oh, didn't man. get as much money as he had hoped. So he is still working on a low budget, but he still and produced he spent, one of the greatest films of all time. He spent a shit ton of money yes. just for that one fucking song, "Steeler's Wheel," stuck in the middle with you. Yeah. Stuck in the middle with you. Can you imagine really? if they? Can yeah. you imagine if they pick something different? He needed that song. He, I, he I could, absolutely I couldn't even, needed the rights to that song. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even imagine. He needed the rights to that song. Um, but yeah, there is plenty of freaking framework in this uh, film for sure. The pancake scene with the streamers coming down. I mean, well, if you're talking uh, about framework, the cinematographer of this film was Rolf D. Bode. Yeah. D. Bo. D. Well, Bode. Was like, his D was a middle initial, and then, you know, Bode, B O D E, is his last name. Okay. Uh, D. Bode. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, you know, I, I, yeah. It's just, it's done so well. Yeah. I, that's the one thing I, I like it. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I want to toast to the cinematographer. One of the greatest. I love cinematography, is like one of my favorite things. Like, I really enjoy it. So, I mean, that's... I also love the fact Cheers. that when he's taking Tia hey, to freaking... Fact. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, when he's taking Tia to school and the camera starts off over here and all you see is a car just smoking <laughs> dun, 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 dun. all the way around. He plays his the theme. <laughs> his theme. <laughs> dun, 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 and then it pulls up. You know what I mean? It's funny because you can hear the buildup of the car. Like it's like like whining. (laughs) And then then as it gets to the front of the school, it's just. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, everybody's like kind of like leaning back a little bit. Like they don't know what's going on. We're already way past this, Manny. But the fact that he every single time his his car makes a shot, which was done with an actual gunshot. And uh, it was done with something else too. It was a gunshot and something else. Flare gun? No, it was. Some, uh, I think it was like a balloon pop or something like that. Um, okay. Every time the 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 car backfires when it turns off, uh, Buck always have to ma- has to make a like a a cue. You know, like every yeah. single time. That's like that was his that's, thing. That's, that was, that's great because he knows thing. how his car works. He's yeah. like, so that's pretty. And cool then, that. like Tia was like down like. He's like tying your shoe. <laughs> it's pretty cool that John Hughes predicted the future with uh, school shootings. Then, <laughs> uh, while we're still talking about the school, one of my favorite scenes, <laughs> by the way, is when Buck picks up Tia for day one from the school, oh. and she walks up, and like the car, like goes, and then Bugs, like, you know, do you have any idea how whipped a car has to be to do that? And then Bug walks in. And then Tia's like, call me. And Bug's like, you ever hear of a tune-up? <laughs> and Buck's all like, you ever hear of a ritual killing? <laughs> and Bug's like, what? You ever gnaw on her face in public like that again? You'll be one. <laughs> and then <it> drives <laughs> off. <laughs> Almost like slams his head in the side of the car. <laughs> oh, it's That's so, so good. fucking funny. So I, good. It's funny that you so mentioned good. that too because I was just thinking about that it's too. A good, it's a good one. All right, so... Framework, we're good there. Let's uh, move on to performance. They all nailed it. I have to agree. They all nailed it. Yeah. I don't think there's a single, <laughs> there's not a single character in this movie where I'm like, they did a piss poor job. No. Like if you're annoyed, you're annoyed at the character themselves, not necessarily the actor. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. I think the only person maybe would probably be Maisie's teacher. He has like two lines in the movie. She? Maisie Seager. Oh, Maisie Seager. The the guy with the yeah. he has the split hair and the glasses. And then he's like blasphemer. Like that's probably the only part. But other than that, I'm like, <laughs> that's funny that it was in there that way. Yeah, you know, it's comical. Even the mom Elaine, how worried she was that Uncle Buck was gonna be watching her kids and shit. Bob. Like, <laughs> Bob. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Nah, I, I think we're good there. I'm good with the, the everyone. Na- everyone the nailed their. Everybody hit. Everyone their mark. nailed their mark. Yeah, let's I move had no on to with uh, anybody in this movie for sure. Let's move on to our uh, next category: uh, the budget. Budget. The budget of the movie um, was actually a decent proportion budget. You know, for a comedy. How much was um, it? I believe the budget for the movie was actually nineteen million dollars. Uh, I guess it's not bad for a comedy. It was a, de- it was a decent budget. Yeah. It was, you know, not bad. Not bad. It was it's not bad. Pretty good. Yeah. You know. I feel like that's average for a comedy. Yeah. Because I was, uh, I was looking into the budget of the movie, and I'm like, uh, the entire thing, like, it, it seemed like there was going to be more into it with a $19 million, you know, budget of the movie, but. It worked out fine because they made over seventy nine million dollars in wow. the box office. In the it, box office, they made that box much? office. Really? Was that domestic or worldwide? Worldwide. Still not bad. It's about four times the value. That's yeah. a pretty yeah. good return. Shit. Worldwide, uh, seventy nine million dollars for Uncle seventy nine point two million dollars. Yeah, it's almost four times the, the value. United That's pretty States. good. Freaking crazy, man! That's really Uncle good. Yeah, Buck. that's really wow. good. You no, know? but I mean, John Candy's known every fucking where, so, and he's been funny for a long time. People were looking for, you know, this guy for a while because he's done so many fucking movies. But yeah, mm-hmm. uh, budget was fucking like nineteen, I believe, and he they made out with a bang. Oh, here you go. Oh, it was even less. Budget was fifteen million. And they oh, came shoot. out on top. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you did your research. Thank you. Yeah. I, it was summoning around there. So it was a uh, budget was about fifteen million dollars, and they came out on top with seventy nine worldwide. All right, That's fucking really good. That's good. Super good fucking movie. That's good. It did very well. Um, yeah, man. With everything they put into the movie, I'm I'm not surprised. It was it was great in comedy. It was great in its um, drama. Well, he put together a really good team. It was, yeah, they really did. So, yeah. And when anytime you have John Hughes at the helm, like, when has he ever done a bad movie? I can't um, think of one. Yeah, <laughs> I can't think of one. I'm sure maybe we'll make that a thing. We'll try. We'll try and find it. We'll try and find a bad Hughes. Well, a bad John Hughes movie. IMDb. He's only directed eight films. Oh really? He's and only like, directed, but he's written a lot more. Yeah. So he write. He's a writer. Yeah, yeah he's a writer. Yeah, that was the budget for the movie, and I think Sweet. I think this movie actually deserved that. It was it, it was done very well, so yeah. I'm actually happy that it did that way. Cool, go fuck yourself. Let's move on to the next category. All right, the outro. Do it. The outro. <clears throat> so, last 15 minutes of the film. So that kind of goes into the party a little bit. So we're just gonna dip right back into the party. Uh. I know I mentioned earlier that Buck was in the party and he's kind of just fucking around a little bit and he has a cigar and then he gets his, you see him later with a drink and he's like, can you guys see the bug around? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he goes upstairs and then that's when it pans into, or not pans, the, the camera shifts to Bug and the girl in the, in the bed and then there's the jiggling of the door and he's like, this room's taken. Jiggles again. He's like, if that door opens, I'm kicking someone's ass. And that's when yeah. the, like the creep, the creepy music. There's like some creepy music playing, and then the the drill right through the fucking doorknob, and it's nice and slow when it comes in. That fucking guy's and then facial he fucking, expression. And then he fucking gets me every time. and then he fucking pans it right back, and then he fucking kicks the door open. There's like smoke and shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's all this smoke, like Blackbeard, right? Yeah. So then, like he. Turns the light on. He's all happy. Does a little eyebrow thing. And then Bug's like, and then the girl sits up and it's not fucking Tia. It's a different girl. And then Buck's like, they're playing that sad music or that sad, you know, the score is like all sad. Yeah. Like, and then Buck looks and he's like, makes a happy face. And then he points the drill down, turns the light off and walks towards him. And then we cut off to Tia walking down an empty street in Chicago Right, I'm assuming it's downtown, maybe, probably, or just someplace off a of main street, because just 
the way the you know or the, in a gym. The, <laughs> well, no, because the way the structure is no, outside, it looks like I'm it's just saying that a lot of their fucking scenes was in the gym. You're a gym. So she's walking outside, and then Buck pulls up next to her, and he's just slowly idling right next to her, and she notices him. Still continues walking. He's driving next to her, and then they meet up, and that's when she's like, "You know what? You know, like you were right." And that's when she gets in the car. You know, she's like, yeah, "You're no right." Shit, I was fucking. Right. You're right. He did everything you said he was going to do, and blah blah blah. She jumps in the car with him, and like we mentioned earlier, he stays silent. He lets her vent to him, which she does, and then. She's like, what happened to Bug? And that's when he's like, oh. Has a smile face, smile on his face. <laughs> She's like, what'd you do? What'd you do? And then it goes to the trunk opening, and then Bug's in the trunk. His hands are all duct taped, and his fucking face is duct taped. And he fucking rips the duct tape off his face. He's like, oh, you asshole. I could have suffocated in here. <laughs> when I get out of here, I'm just going <laughs> to sue you. And he's all like, he's all like, He's like, I think you, uh, I think you owe the young lady apology. And he's like, I'm sorry. You hear that? Okay, I'm sorry, asshole. I'm sorry. And then like, Uncle Buck's like, mm, I don't know if that's good. And then like, she pulls out the drill. Yeah, she and then she's all creepy now. She's like, <laughs> and he's like, I'm, s- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Changes. He goes from like badass to bitch real quick. <laughs> <laughs> He's first apologizing to Uncle Buck. <laughs> and then to her. And so they pull him out, you know, and he's like, oh, and they pull him out of the truck. I think he's had enough. Pull him out of the trunk. And he hits his head and he's like, oh, I'm sorry about that. You know, Uncle Buck's, you know, John Candy's Canadian. So he says, sorry. <laughs> so the entire time we let him out. And then Bug starts fucking rattling off. You know, because he's a piece of shit. He's That's like, right. You better right. get out of here. You better get out of here, you I'll chicken your shit, ass, man. Chicken shit. You come back, I'll sue you. I'll kick your ass. And then that's when the, the theme music plays again. <laughs> you see the car back up. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then fucking Bug's like, oh, shit. And runs off <laughs> he into the woods. fucking taking off. And then Uncle Buck gets out of the car, opens the trunk. He's like, all right, how about a five iron then? He pulls a fucking golf club out and some balls, and he drops the balls, and he goes and he tees off, and he fucking hits one at, at Bug, and it hits him right in the back of his. He's like, oh, you son of a bitch. That hurt. Like, and then fucking, uh, he's like, I'm going to fucking sue you for everything you've got, and he hits him again. Like, oh, fuck. No, not, he doesn't even hit him. He just puts his hand out and drops another ball, and that's when Bug freaks out. Hits, and gets no, up no, and he runs. hits him twice, and then the third time he goes to drop him, he drops one. Hits him twice. He I hits don't him remember twice. Hitting him once and dropping him. He hits him twice. Oh, okay. He hits him twice, and then the third time he drops it, and then Bug's like, "Oh shit!" and then runs off, and it cuts away, <laughs> and it cuts back to the house. Yeah, with uh, Shanice and Tia, and, and Tia is apologizing to Shanice for lying. Yeah, for telling. Shanice, that Uncle Buck was hanging out with uh, Marcy, you know, because uh, Tia was in a in a weird place at the time. So Tia's uh, explaining to Marcy that she basically lied to her because she was upset that Uncle Buck was ruining her her, her life. Yeah. Um. And but at the same time, Uncle Buck is listening, right? He's listening. In on their conversation. Yeah. And that door, it's one of those, like, those... Uh, swinging doors. Swinging doors, you know, like a saloon door. Right. When they swing both ways. Yeah. And then, like, Tia's trying to hint that Marcy noticed that he's there because he coughed. And Marcy... Uh, Marcy, not Marcy. Janice walks up, to, walks up to the door. And then Tia's, like, hinting, like... <clears throat> She's like hinting that fucking Shanice is there. Because right now, freaking uh, Tia is talking up Buck, and it seems like Shanice can tell that it's being scripted. Yeah. You know, Shanice can can definitely tell that it's being scripted. And as she's trying to tell her that it's not and everything like that, Buck apparently gets like a notion of, you know, something must be going on. That's when Shanice winds up and kicks the swinging door in. And he realizes that was going to happen. So he steps out of the way. The door swings open right out of the way. And then he follows back 
And as he goes back to when the door closes, she kicks it a second time. <laughs> Finally <laughs> nails him in the fucking face. And there's like a scene where like the camera has like an up view. And like he's like, ooh, <laughs> right over. <laughs> and at that point, you see Shanice with her arm crossed, smiling at Buck. And there's like a cute, there's a cute little cartoon moment when he lands. <laughs> he's like, ooh. And it's like, they play the Tweety Bird sound effect. <laughs> and then he gets up right away like, ugh. Oh, almost like what the hell He's happened? Like, oh, I'm sorry, honey. Where well, you guys were in there? <laughs> I like I didn't know. Just wait for that <laughs> coffee. I'm really thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, you know. And um, after that, you know, they're uh, they're playing tag with the kids. Actually, yeah, they're playing tag with the kids. Playing tag with the kids. They're going from room to room, and then their mom and dad come home. Yeah. So, and as their mom and dad come home, mom walks through the door. Hold on, hold on. So Shanice, Buck, and Miles and Maisie are in the kitchen. Yeah. Tia's waiting in the entryway of the house because the parent, you know, the, their parents are coming home, and Tia wants to make it up to the, her her mother for being so nasty at her all the time. Okay. And so Uncle Buck is explaining that to Miles and Maisie. He's telling them, you know, they need, we need to be quiet. She needs to make up with your mom. Yeah. And so we're gonna send a button up. We're gonna lock it. And throw away the key. Yeah. And then so when Cindy steps to the door and she looks up, and she sees Tia just standing there. She's at, actually at a loss for words because she she's not sure what to expect. Like, is Tia going to blow up and yell at her? What's going to happen? And she's slowly And then slowly her. Tia walks up and then just hugs her. And then we get that heartfelt music with the piano and like a little bit of the, the the winds and stuff behind it. Yeah. Um and then Bob steps in and then Cindy's like, you know, things are going to be different. And then that's when the pots and pans that are above the island in the kitchen fall. Oh down. yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, "Oh my god." Like an uncle <laughs> and, and then Buck's like, "Shit." <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, after that, you know, it shows them they're about to leave. You know, they're trying to say goodbye. And Shanice is telling them, oh, we'll come by more often. We'll see you. We're going to miss you, this and that. And Buck is like, we're going home. We're, we're not dying or anything, you know. Yeah, we're not dying. <laughs> we'll be back to visit. Yeah. You know, and he's like, can I say goodbye? Which is cool because, like, he's rekindled all that. That stuff with his with his family that, yeah, that he hasn't exactly. seen in forever, with his brother, his you know, you know his, his sister in law, sister in law, his nephew and exactly. his nieces, like it's all come full circle and they're like a big happy family. Exactly. So as they go back to their car as they're getting ready to leave, Tia is at the door and Buck is at his car and they're just looking at each other. You know, it's Basically a look of, hey, I love you and I got you and right back at you mm -hmm. kind of ordeal. And from there on, um, Buck gets into his car and Shanice takes off and Buck takes off. And that's the, I believe that's the end. Of no, that's not how it ends. It? Tia, Shanice gets in her car. Tia stands there. Buck stands there looking at each other. Yeah. Tia waves at Buck and then Buck waves back. Freeze frame. And then that's the end of the movie. Oh, okay. So not so different what I said, but okay. Um, but yeah, that was a really good ending of the movie. Yeah, the like a yeah. No. I love this movie. So I mean, this it was a really good movie. Good I movie. would definitely watch this over again for sure. Definitely. I mean, I watch this movie a lot. So yeah, I, I highly recommend it if you guys like comedies, especially like that eighty style. Like this is definitely a movie to watch if you haven't seen it. I mean, John Candy he has he has a, a long list of comedies that he's yeah. been in. So I mean, he's he's a legend. Oh, yeah, so, it definitely I mean, is. Enjoy his films. Enjoy his films. Him and John Hughes both. Him and John yeah. Hughes, yeah. Who doesn't like the Breakfast Club? I was yeah. gonna say like <laughs> free frame on John Candy, right? and then don't you forget, forget about, about me. <laughs> <laughs> and so that leads us to our last category, which is our category. category. I'm loving these Manhattans. <laughs> our last category, which is our rating. Mm. And since this is your baby, I was gonna say, turn. Manny, you've never seen this before. 
I've never seen this before. Well, do, I'm, I'm curious to see what your rating is. Should I rate this then? Because rate it, and then we're going to tell you whether rated, or not your rating is I dog shit. And the then last we'll. Movie. You did rate the last okay, movie. Okay, okay, okay. I Go did watch. rate the last movie. Take over. Okay, hold on. You rate this movie, or should. Yeah, you rate this movie, and I'll, I'll let you know what I think afterwards. Okay. Um. All right, so we have. Like usual, when nostalgia is not a thing. Uh, when we, we rate these movies, we, we don't include nostalgia because that creates a, a big bias. So we have to look at it from all angles of the movie. You know. Fresh eyes. Fresh eyes. Yes. Um, and as far as this movie goes to today's standards, I believe I would rate this. I'm going to go four Mel Gibsons. Four Mel Gibsons. Okay. Four Mel Gibsons. So before you gave your rating, I actually told him what I was going to rate this at. Show me the cards. Yeah, man. And I also gave uh, a four Mel Gibsons as well. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's worthy of a five. Four, four and a half. You said four. And four. Then you, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't think it's worthy of a five. I'm sorry. Like five is like, that's the tippity top, the best of the best. <laughs> yeah. And this is like it's it's good, but to today's standards, I don't think it hits that category. Um, and there is the nostalgia factor. I grew up watching this film, yeah. So I love this film a lot. Yeah, and me watching this film for the first time uh, for the first time last week. Um, overall, what I thought of this movie, it was a gr- a great freaking movie. You know what I mean? I I, I loved it. Well, that helps it the case then. Awesome. So it's not just but nostalgia. At yeah. the thing, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not nost- it's not nostalgia. It was a really good movie. You know, That's I didn't good. grow up with the movie, so I don't really have the nostalgia for the movie. It was just a really good movie for me. So I have to give this a four mil Gibson because, hey, I liked it. There were some things in there that were a little, eh, but overall, solid four uh, mil Gibson. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Four okay. Mel Gibson guys. Four Mel Gibsons. I think we can uh I think we can roll on. Mel Gibson from Braveheart. That'd be awesome. <laughs> you want William Wallace? William Wallace. I don't know, maybe. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um so I think we can roll we can roll on with we can roll out, right? Yeah, we can roll out, man. All right. So uh if you guys really enjoy our content, uh please leave a comment. Uh that really helps the algorithm. Uh, if you guys want to contact us and maybe put in uh, a suggestion for movies, uh, you can email us at uh, nyec.gse at gmail.com. Uh, we'll get to your we'll get to your movies as soon as possible. We have uh, f- movies selected for this month and also the month of December, and we're going to be taking suggestions or reviewing suggestions in January. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel. Please hit the notification. Please hit the notification. Comments will definitely help the algorithm and make selections definitely better. Um, what else do you have to add to that? Um, again, we just want to let you know that movies are definitely subjective. They're, they're, you know, they may be for you. They might not be for you. But they're definitely for somebody out there. Okay? So give a movie a chance. Go out there. Let us know whatever it is that you think of it. Let us know what you think of our content um and uh i don't know because yeah, our time. content's the length of a movie so <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah but until next time wow these manhattans man they're fucking um, delicious where they really are happy movie going and uh cheers in we're empty cups i'm right? not cheersing with an empty glass yeah, it's bad luck yeah. all right well Let's drink too much till next time till next time We'll Happy movie later. going. Happy movie going. Be safe. Be safe. Bitches.